right, so here we have question two, A through C, and these are going to be true and false questions. So all Bronsted acids are Lewis acids, that's the first statement. Um, so here, this is a little chart that I remembered from the gen chem, it helped me to remember, it was like a little bullseye type thing. Um, and if we just knew the chart, then we would say, okay, well, we do know that all Bronsted acids are Lewis acids because it's within the Lewis circle. So just from that, we would know it's true. But another way to kind of think of it is, okay, so a Lewis acid is an electron acceptor and a Bronsted acid is a proton donor. So in order to be a proton donor, you must be able to accept electrons, so that's why all Bronsted acids are Lewis acids, but not all Lewis acids are Bronsted acids, because here, not um, every electron acceptor has a proton to give up, so that's why that was the answer, so the answer for this one was true. that all Bronsted acids are Lewis acids. Then the next question is, the delta S for HCl addition to styrene is negative. So first we have to kind of think back, okay, what does delta S mean? Delta S refers to spontaneity, so um, basically we're just trying to figure out whether the reaction is spontaneous or not. So if delta S is negative, that means that we are in a spontaneous, or a non-spontaneous reaction. So delta S is equal to negative, so therefore it's non-spontaneous. So I'll just abbreviate that. So remember, this is kind of going back to gem chem as well. Um, with a non-spontaneous reaction, you're going to be getting, you're going to be starting off with more moles of reactant than product. So here, um, styrene is a starred molecule, so um, you're kind of expected to know that. Um, and when you add HCl to it, just, I kind of outlined the mechanism, you don't have to go through it if you can kind of see it in your head. But um, it's a carbocation reaction. Chlorine then comes in and adds to the um, most stable benzoic position for the cation. And this is our final product. So as you see, you start off with more moles than you end up with. Therefore, it's not spontaneous. So this is true also. So I'll box it in true. So that one was also true. Then, this last one. Benzoic acid has a lower pKa value than acetic acid due to additional resonance stabilization of its conjugate base. So um, here we kind of have to know what pKa, what the difference between um, pKa and acidity is. So um, in this one, pKa is being lowered. So therefore, that means the lower the pKa, the higher the acidity of the molecule. Think about um, just like pH is, when you have a lower pH, that means it's more acidic than when you have something with a higher pH, it's more basic. So here, um, we have something with a higher acidity. So what we do is, these are also, um, I think, starch molecules that you're expected to know for the exam. And um, so you draw them out, and what we do is we always deprotonate, and then we compare the two using Dr. J's protocol. So here we deprotonated each of them, and we see we compare the molecule or the atom you just deprotonated. There's negative charge on oxygen for both of them, so there's no difference there between size or electronegativity. And then we look at resonance. Um, in the questions, it's in the question it says um, acetic acid. Um, I'm sorry, benzoic acid is has lower pKa, so therefore it's more acidic than acetic acid because it has additional resonance stabilization. This is actually false, 
and that's because um, this benzene here doesn't provide any extra resonance stabilization. Um, Dr. J kind of jokes, don't mess with benzene. Um, so you can't really resonate your negative charge through benzene, therefore um, it's false.